السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله when I was brief regarding this event I was told that the theme of this event is a new beginning now considering where we currently are 30 years in the new dispensation and 60 years perhaps into the new or perhaps we can't call it new the traditional race-based suburbs after the group areas act at a point now when we reflect over new beginning what comes to mind so please allow me to draw a scenario of a group of young people who are enthusiastic and they are having a conversation and they are reflecting over the past and the legacy of their communities so they would be divided typically into two groups the first group would be those who say that our forefathers who have come before us have an immaculate legacy and for that reason we need to continue to replicate that legacy without wavering from that legacy in the least the second group from amongst them would say that our forefathers who preceded us they lacked vision they lacked enthusiasm they were complacent and for that reason we need to abolish their legacy and we need to establish something new so for the first group our response to that is that our role is to walk the path of our forefathers not to sit on the path of our forefathers and stagnate to the second group who say we need to abolish the legacy we need to reflect on that and ask ourselves is this activism of deconstruction that everything should fall institutions should fall organizations should fall communities should fall so if everything should fall the pertinent question to ask is what should rise in that instance if everything should fall now between these two polarized extremes the one extreme of not progressing beyond the efforts of our forefathers in our community the other extreme of abolishing everything that came before us between these two polarized extremes is a very beautiful moderate balanced approach between the two Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the point of his departure from this world is a beautiful case study of what had transpired there were those who said we cannot waver from the actions that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam did and there were others who said that the era of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had terminated they turned renegade and some even followed Musaylama the apostate and they went on to something new but between these two extremes there was excellence in the moderate manner taken by the Khulafa Rashidin they salvaged they cherished they honored what came before them what all of the beauty of the legacy of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they cherished it in its fullest form so when some people said we need to abolish zakat they had fought their tooth and nail saying we need to cherish what came before us in the effort of our forefathers yet they did not stagnate on the path there are so many we don't call it innovations but so many forms of progress introduced by the Khulafa one example which received a lot of pushback and resistance was that of the renovation of Masjid al-Nabawi the Khulafa decided we need to renovate Masjid al-Nabawi so that we can progress others said this renovation was not done during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam this would not be allowed another was that they wanted to standardize the Quran and create one sort of manuscript that the ummah can conform to as it said this was not done during the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam but it required bravery that they went ahead despite the resistance and another example was the of this was when Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu seen that people were having difficulty performing the Taraweeh Salah at home so Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu initiated the Taraweeh Salah in Jamaat in the Masjid so he created progress on the model of Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what I'm advocating for when we talk about a new beginning it does not mean deconstructing the things that exist nor does it mean stagnating on, on the legacies of our forefathers but it means cherishing what came before us and building on it and taking it to the next level so in a practical sense what does this mean in a practical sense we go back to the founding documents of any community or any organization any association and we explore what their mission statement was for what reason was this establishment established and when we explore this we determine its relevance today is it still relevant is it still applicable is it still needed based on the resources at hand based on the opportunities at hand based on the challenges that we're facing as a community is this mission statement still relevant 
If the mission statement is relevant, we go with it. If the mission statement is now redundant and no longer relevant because the challenges and the opportunities have changed, then we revisit this mission statement and stipulate a very clear objective of what we're seeking to achieve as a community and as an organization. Once we've determined very clearly what we're looking to achieve, then consistently throughout the running of this organization, we do not do any action for the sake of doing an action. One of the trustees of one masjid where I served used to say the worst rationale behind any action is simply because we've always done it like that. That's routine, that's mundane, that's stagnation. So we're constantly interrogating our actions to determine whether our actions are aligned to our mission statement. So the mission statement remains original, but we implement innovative methods to achieve a greater outcome, and that's what we're calling for in a practical sense. In a practical sense, what could also be brought in is we often praise people, and I heard Malana Suleiman Ravid making the statement a few years ago in Botswana, and I'm going to quote it. He said that we often praise tall words by saying, this person was such an outstanding leader that there's nobody to fill his shoes. Is that really outstanding leadership? Leadership ought to include succession planning. Leadership ought to be structured in a way that you're mentoring people to fulfill the role that you are fulfilling. So perhaps a form of revitalization of existing structures is by inclusive of young energy. And that young energy would give it the life that it's required for it to run for the next hundred years as well.